In this video, we will create some lofts to finish our robot arm. We've split one, two, three, four times, so our splits are complete. We also need to create a helix or a spiral. I think I will start by creating a helix as well as a spiral. We'll look at the two, how they're similar, how they're different, and then we will use a helix inside our upper arm or possibly our lower arm. To create a helix, we select the curve option. You'll notice we have helix here as well as spiral here. We do need an axis to start with, so with grid snap on, I'm going to create a 10 unit axis. I'll go to curve, select helix, and we'll look at some of the options. If we have an axis, we can define it by a start point and an end point, or if we have a curve, we could define it around a curve. I'll start by doing a straight axis. As I pull this out, you can see that our axis or our helix is starting to display. Right now we have three turns. You can count that by looking at the crests of our spring. I like to refer to a helix as a spring because it's a little bit more appropriately uh, defining it, I think. Um, but that's editable. Underneath turns, we could change this to 15, and now you can see our spring has a lot more turns. I think I'm going to turn <laughs> turn my turns down to 5. That's a bit more appropriate. A helix has the same radius down the entire length of said helix. Whereas a spiral is defined the same way. We again have turns that are controllable. I'll set these to five. The difference with a spiral is we determine one radius at one end and then an, a different radius at the other end. So a helix has the same radius the entire length, whereas a spiral has one radius at one end and then tapers down. These on their own are not enough. We do need to put a pipe on it. One important thing to remember when you are creating a pipe on a helix is your radius cannot be greater than the, than the distance between your two peaks. If I choose this value, my helix will self-intersect. So you need to choose a value that's less than half of the distance between your two peaks. That looks much more appropriate. And if we select our spiral, use the same values, you can see what the uh, spiral looks like as opposed to the helix. A little bit on how to create those. I'm going to select this surface. This is a surface that we split previously. And I'm going to rotate it along this blue axis. Actually, let me undo that so it's back in the correct position. And I actually might rotate it along the red axis 180 degrees. That will flip it opposite of what it was. I'd also like to scale it by flattening it a little bit. Then we'll bring this down inside of our character's arm. What I'm going to do at this point is delete that old hexagon that gave us nothing but trouble. Surface, loft, I'm going to loft this edge 
to this edge. And that should partially fill this in. It does look like we're going to need to loft these additional edges as well to fill in the rest of that. That looks good. I'm going to change this to wireframe and I'm going to draw a line with my O snaps on specifically just center point. I'd like to choose the center point of that and the center point of that to get a straight line. I'm going to shrink this down so that it only fills this little area inside of our hollowed out arm. Here's that line once more. With this line selected, underneath curve, I'm going to select helix, and we're going to select a round curve, specifically this curve. That's a good size helix. It does look like my helix is partially buried beneath the surface that I created. Let me look at that in my top view. Maybe if we angle it a bit, we do want it above there. That looks good. We can pipe this, again, making sure that our pipe distance is less than half the distance between our amplitudes of our helix. Enter to use that same value. Looking that in the perspective viewport, we have that giant spring now inside of our character's arm. I like that. So we've used the pipe command on a helix. We've also used the pipe command a number of times on our fingers as well as on our edges. We've split, we've lofted two lofts. We could also loft um, this object as well. First, we're going to need to rotate this 180 to kind of give it that flip. I'll flatten that down, and then we will lower this inside of our character's arm. We will select surface, loft, and we will loft edge to edge, and then loft this edge. Don't know why that's not lofting cleanly, but that should be good. I might even join the bottom surface. Let me hit escape and redo this. Join the bottom surface to the vertical to this surface so that all of these can be textured at one time. Additionally, I'm gonna join this surface to the bottom surface to our front surface so those surfaces may be textured all at the same time. In this hollow area, let's see, what can we create? I'll create a small battery and then possibly a small spiral to keep that battery in place. Curve, spiral, we will define a simple axis just using grid snap. Our first radius will be here. No. We'll define a short axis, take our turns drastically down, define one end, define the other end, and we will pipe this. Taking grid snap off to make a rather small pipe. That looks good. Bring this down inside of our shape. It looks as if it's centered. But of course, we only drag the curve, not our true helix. That looks like it's in place. Very good. I think I'll create, 
uh, something of a battery to put inside that arm. I don't really care that it's not in the right position because using our different viewports we can kind of get this where we need it to be. We'll shrink that down. I might even take this, make a copy, control C, control V, rotate it 180 degrees, bring it to the opposite side. And shrink our battery contraption down a bit. Center it inside the arm, and we have these spirally things going in. Let's go into our solid tools, go into chamfer, and remove a 0.5 chamfer from both edges. I like it. I think at this point we have completed everything necessary. So, upper arm, elbow, lower arm, and gripper. First I will select everything that is the gripper. We'll right click on the word gripper and change all of the objects layer. And then turn the eyeball off. Not an eyeball, it's a light bulb. Next we'll select the elbow, right click on the word elbow, change object layer, hide that. Select the lower arm, right click on the word lower arm, change object layer, and we'll hide that. Last, we'll take the upper arm, right click on the word upper arm, change object layer, and hide that. Now when we turn all of the light bulbs on, all of our geometry will appear.